Hi there, my name is Joey. And before getting started, I just want to say thank you so much for being here. I feel really lucky to be at this year's config, and I'm really excited to talk to all of you. A little bit about me. My pronouns are he, him, and I'm based over here in the Midwest in Columbus, Ohio. I live with my amazing fiance, Kristen, and we have a little dog named Ellie. She's a rescue, she's a total goof, and she's always making us laugh. Today, I work as a product designer over at Twitter, where I'm focused on design systems and tooling. But actually, before joining Twitter, I was a designer advocate at Figma, where I was helping onboard teams and share to the community. This experience helped me gain so many new perspectives for how people and companies use Figma. I'm so excited to be here with all of you and to talk a bit about my own experience within design systems and for creating within the community. So I wanna talk about how it took a little bit of time for me to find my thing. My very first role within design was at a transportation focused company over there in San Francisco. I was the only designer on the team and it was truly terrifying. Everything was totally new. But it was also an incredible opportunity because it allowed me to explore so many different areas at once. I got to see research and marketing and prototyping. So much of that resonated with me and I knew that design was the field that I wanted to be in, but I really had no idea where I wanted to take my career. And maybe this sort of experience is true for many of us. I think often it can feel like there's the pressure on you to know right away what it is that you want to spend your time doing. But if it's any help, I'm here to share that it's completely okay to take your time and explore. I'm so glad I did. So I knew that I really liked the field of design, but I wasn't sure what it was that I wanted to focus on. And as life often does, it threw a curveball. In 2015, I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes which is an autoimmune disease, and it completely knocked me off the balance that I thought I had. It was honestly so scary. Uh, it was the first, I'm the first one in my family to have type 1 diabetes, and it was all so new. That first night home from the hospital was truly terrifying, and I'm so glad I had my fiance Kristen there, but I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea what the future ahead looked like. I felt like I had a total loss of control overnight, and Honestly, it's impacted every moment of every day since. And it was a pretty hard time and I was really struggling and maybe many of you can relate to this. And I know it's a little bit cheesy, but I wanted to try to get a bit closer to the problem as a way to maybe understand my own experience a little better. I also wanted to try to help people in doing so. And so I joined a company that was in the healthcare space. They had a bold mission with patients who needed help as it related to type 2 diabetes. And this was also my first introduction to Figma. And we got to partner really closely, which was pretty cool. The product needed to scale as fast as possible to help us deliver care to the most people. And something that stuck out was how often elements were either recreated, accidentally redesigned, which led to slower shipping speeds. And we've probably all been there. It didn't take long for us to, for our colors to go from this to this. And well, um, we had a lot of buttons. And additionally, it didn't take long to find design systems. As soon as that work started, I completely fell in love with it because I was able to see what the existence of a design system could do for the team, including design and engineering and product, and really just for the product itself. It was really exciting. And after a little more time, design systems and component libraries taught me that they can help people do their best work because I think the work can become more accurate with production and the process is sped up. They can also provide a bridge in communication between teams. Designers can feel a little bit more confident in what they're creating and sharing with others on the team. And also others outside of design can more easily begin to participate in design. I think that part's really special. And so with all of that in mind, I would love to talk more about sharing. Before just a few years ago, I had never shared to the design community before. Screenshots and dribble posts here and there, but never actual files. The thought of putting something out there where my layers could be inspected and seen by someone else, no way, that was so scary. I wouldn't have done that. 
And in the career that I was beginning to have, I started to do more and more iOS work, which was created in Figma. And each time I would start on a new file or project, I needed to find and use the same system UI over and over again. And so I would either copy outdated iOS UI from previous design files, I would download a sketch template to use in Figma, but I was never able to use Figma's latest features such as variants with it, and that always felt kind of disappointing. Or, and maybe the most common, I would just take screenshots and crop. And each method felt messy, and I was never certain about the quality of the work that I was presenting and sharing. Didn't my designs match iOS well enough? Were there really large glaring gaps? And this was something that happened often. And so because of that, I started to recreate a few components here and there, and I kept them in a file that I would often reference. I would take screenshots and slowly trace over them while adding Figma functionality, such as variants, interactive components, and more. And I started with just a few, but they all started to add up and more and more came. And well, a lot more came. <laughs> And then I had an idea, which was, what if I shared these components out? And I got really excited by that. But just as fast as that idea came, a lot of doubts started to creep in. I started to wonder, who am I to share? What if I made mistakes in what I created? And spoiler, there were a lot of mistakes. I was also thinking, I'm not Apple, I'm just Joey. And what if someone else shares a resource that's way better than something I created? This will also always happen. But as quickly as that doubt swept in, so did another thought. I was thinking if this project is helpful for me, it could be helpful for at least one other person out there too. So I'm just going to put it out there, close my eyes, hit publish and see what happens. And well, three years later, I'm still making and trying to share as much as I can. The support and the response has been incredible. And I really have many of you to thank for all of that encouragement. These files and resources do seem helpful for others. I think a lot of that comes back to um, the, I think a lot of that comes back to the thought that design systems and component libraries can help people do their best work. There's no way again to convey all of the anxiety and fear that I had when I shared something for the first time. But wow, was it worth it? It's so much easier to share after the first time too. And again, before this, I had never shared before. I had never put anything out there. Most of my time was spent thinking about the worst case scenario, but I was never actually thinking through what that worst case scenario could be. I mean, really, what was the worst that could happen? It wouldn't get a download. But then I was like, well, it's not going to get a download anyway if I don't put it out there, so I might as well do it. I think, too, you can never be guaranteed a huge success when you put something of your own out there. But even if just one person finds it to be helpful or insightful, it's a win. And also sharing out work has the potential to help everyone. It doesn't just have to be a large component library either. Many times in my own career, I've looked at someone else's work and I've thought, oh, I wonder how they created that shadow or how they created that gradient. You know, I wonder also how are their layers organized? Is that something I might be able to borrow from? And I love this design. I wonder if I could recreate it. I usually can't, but I try. And there are so many things that someone could learn from your work. So just try it. And next, it was kind of time for the real thing. In the winter of 2020, I decided to join the talented team over here at Twitter to help work on design systems and tooling. This opportunity felt extra special because Twitter is the tool that allowed me the chance to meet and talk with many of you. It was a total dream job. But up until this point, I had really only worked at smaller companies and on design systems that were really just getting going. I didn't know much about what the job could look like, and that was a little scary. But I knew I wanted to learn what it was like to work for a larger company, especially one like Twitter. I also wanted to see what it was like to take extended responsibility and to see the decisions and the work through. And I wanted to know, were there differences in the potential impact of the work? And one of my very early projects was helping to bring our component library from Sketch into Figma. It was a lot of fun. And remember all of those feelings that I mentioned earlier about being afraid to share back to the Figma community? Well, they quickly came back because I was one designer among nearly 300 extremely talented people at Twitter on the design team. 
And I was asking myself, what if I made mistakes in the component that I was creating? I'd make someone else's work look bad. And wait, I just got here. Does the team even trust me? Do they even know me? And what if I published out a mistake? Could that quickly cause a really bad ripple effect for everyone who is using and relying on the design system? And who am I to be helping with this? Imposter syndrome was totally kicking in hard at this moment. And I kept asking myself, should I have this much responsibility? And I was immediately telling myself that the answer was nope, definitely not. And it didn't take long also to discover some of the differences between creating for the Figma community and creating for a large design team. With community work, it can be tough to see the impact of, of how things are being used. You can always see the duplication number, but you can't necessarily know how those components are, what they're being used for, or where they're being used. And with creating for a large design team, it's easier to see the impact, but there's also way more responsibility and pressure that goes along with it. But in both situations, the motivation for me comes from seeing what others are doing with the work that's created. Oh, and everything's a bit more complex within a company too. For example, does the component exist if it's not yet documented? How are changes shared with the team? Are files regularly updated to reflect the latest component adjustments? And localization and accessibility are huge areas of focus and importance at Twitter. And breaking changes just can't happen as often as they might in a Figma community file of my own because those broken things have the potential to immediately affect the work of others. And so, yeah, that was week one at Twitter. It was a lot. So truthfully, I've been at Twitter for about a year and a half now, and I'm still working on everything that I just mentioned. Overcoming those fears and feelings of total overwhelm can be really tough, but I do have a few learnings to share. The first is that a good design system or a component library can help people other can help others feel more confident in their work. In today's world, many of us are remote first, and we may have even joined a new company during the last couple of years. I know I did. And sharing to an experienced team who's familiar with the product as a new designer can be really scary. And this is my own insecurity coming in a little bit, but it can really be something that you're hesitant to do. Having a design system or a component library can help. We've all been in the position where we're in a design critique and we notice something on the screen that feels just a little bit off. And even if we as designers level set the critique, there's always a chance of that tiny mistake being pointed out and it can completely divert the conversation. And you're like, wait, can't we just focus on the larger things instead? I put all this work into that. I think too, design systems and component libraries allow you to move a bit more quickly in the right ways. New ideas can be tried and mentioned, or can be tried as mentioned earlier. And they can help unify design, engineering, and product in new ways. I think that part is, again, especially special. The next learning is using design systems can be scary, and the experience and the support that's available matter. Throughout the talk, I've been sharing this big insecurity of my own, which is the possibility of presenting unpolished work to stakeholders and to other designers in the room. And while I was writing this talk, it actually helped me to see that there may be an additional side to all of this too, which is the fear that many might have when presenting work back to design systems and looking for approval or advice. So much work has already gone into the design, such as research and validation and prototyping, and no one wants to be blocked. And so I think when someone shares work that involves the design system, it's really important to start with everything that's right. This stuff is not easy. And also try to focus on creating a comfortable and safe space for others to share. For example, at Twitter, we hold weekly office hours where we can create, where we create the time to meet with anyone and everyone. We're here to help you be successful, not to block or slow you down. Also try to ask how it's going. Are there any bugs with the components, with the design system? What's been tough? What could be better? Are all of the variants making sense? There's a lot that you can learn from this. And additionally, I might suggest involving others, promoting ownership, and encouraging contributions from anyone on the team. These things matter, and they really do help. Design systems can do a great job at bringing non-designers into the design conversation and process. And that sort of thing always feels a bit magical and really just awesome. Someone who's not a designer being able to communicate their ideas through design, that's so cool. And the last learning that I wanted to share 
is that design systems can evolve to be a way of working as opposed to just another bump in that sometimes very long road. And so I think design systems is a service. Uh, there's a mechanic analogy here that always comes to my mind that a friend recently told me, which was, we're sort of like a mechanic in the sense that we're never there to tell you how to drive, but we exist to help get your car fixed and to help it be the best darn car that it can be. We don't want to tell you how to design. We just want to, we just want you to be able to do your best work with everything that's available or with everything that could soon be available. We're not here to block you. We're here to support you. And when you have design systems, you don't have to reinvent components and patterns that might already exist. I think this is especially true because design systems can have a high level view of the platform and we might be able to expose things that could be useful for you. We're never against you coming up with new things. And if you're presenting a new pattern that might already exist, there's a chance that we could save you a little bit of time. In short, I really believe that design systems is a tool and that we just hope that you can use it. We're also in a constant transition to move from a product to a process. And it might not always be an achievable goal, but that's completely okay. For example, the design system that I work on, it started as a project, which actually took place in a hackathon. It turned into a product, which was the very first version of that design system. And we're trying to make it a bit more of a process. We're also often in customer support mode. And that customer feedback helps us choose and determine the right priorities for the foundation ahead. I think that part is especially important. And honestly, one of the most fun parts of being within design systems, you get to help people. We're not experts in everything, nor should we be. I see this all the time and we're constantly looking to accessibility and content design and research to make sure that what we're making is working for everyone. And so there were a lot of things that I tried to cover in this talk about the experience that I've had within design so far, but I wanna leave you with one final thought, which is to simply share. The community and the industry need your voice and your inspiration because everyone always has something to learn. Again, even if what you make and share just helps just one other person out there, it's a win. Thank you. <laughs>